Nein. Stein. It's training time for these teenagers destined one day for service in the Israeli Armed Forces. They're among 250 recruits on a special pre-army program. Yes, they're going to be ready. They're good guys. It will be all right. They're going to turn into lions. You ready? Everyone on their backs. Until now, these young men have been more accustomed to studying the Torah than building muscle mass. They're Haredi, or ultra-Orthodox Jews, who can, by law, claim exemption from military service. But since the Hamas attacks of the 7th of October, more Haredim have expressed a desire to enlist, like 18-year-old twins Elam and Yoel. The Netzha Yehuda battalion is proof that religion can't be a pretext not to serve in the army. The program provides a religious framework that allows us to combine our personal and family values with our commitment to our country and our people. The Netza Yehuda Battalion was created in 1999 to allow ultra-Orthodox and other religious Israeli Jews to serve in the army without compromising their religious beliefs. Largely stationed since then in the occupied West Bank, Netza Yehuda has faced controversies, some of its soldiers accused of violence against Palestinians. At this Netza Yehuda associated yeshiva or religious school, Military training fits around Torah studies. I'm at a higher level. There are various classes. I study up to three hours every morning. There are no contradictions between the army and the religion. At the end of the day, it comes down to what people choose. If someone wants to turn away from God, he can use the army to do so. If, on the other hand, you want to elevate yourself, you can also do that in the army. OK, let's take things slowly. Three lapses. Serving in the army remains a taboo in the ultra-Orthodox community. Some families don't welcome it. Of course, my family would have preferred me to be in a yeshiva. But the army can be the same thing. My father was a soldier himself. There's no difference whether we defend our country by studying the Torah or by fighting. And at the moment, the country needs us more physically. But of course, my family accepts me the way I am. I can go home even wearing a uniform. I'm not worried. Other Haredi soldiers aren't as lucky. Some feel hostility from their communities or can't live there while they're serving. So for them, and for those who live far from their families, Netza Yehuda provides somewhere to stay. The families sometimes are not supporting them. We are building homes for them. Our mission, our main mission, is to see the Haredi more and more involved in the IDF, minimum to double it in two, three years. This is our mission. Because we believe that we must be part of the Israeli society, especially in the days. In Kiryat Hayovela, neighborhood of Jerusalem, a religious ceremony is being held. A new soldier's home is opening, dedicated to the memory of Binyamin Loeb, a French-Israeli soldier killed in the Hamas attack on the Kafar Aza kibbutz. His family has traveled over for the service. He was 23 years old. He was about to finish his military service next month, go back to France and get married. He wanted to contribute to this country and the army. So he enrolled, he threw himself into it, and he died a hero. Since the 7th of October, there's been a rise in the number of young ultra-Orthodox Israelis seeking to join the army. Not an easy change for a conservative community, reluctant to mix with wider society. But as the war drags on, some opposition politicians have called for an end to religious military exemption. Out of the question for this rabbi. If they force um, the young people in the Orthodox community to integrate and assimilate into the general IDF, uh, IDF public, let's call it that, then it's not going to work. Another red line, maintaining traditional gender roles. What about the role of women? Is there any role for Orthodox women within the IDF? Um, not, I would say no, not directly, not directly. There are um, programs which have nothing to do with the IDF, but uh, that, um, that women are peripherally involved through uh, computer courses, uh, not courses, computer programs and, and things along th that nature um, that certainly help uh, the IDF, but uh, surely not directly connected with the IDF. It wouldn't be appropriate? I don't think so. No, 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 we don't think so.
In Haredi communities, the role of women, the importance of their chastity, modesty and behaviour are sensitive subjects, as we found out in the ultra-Orthodox neighbourhood of Ramat Eshkol in Jerusalem. We join the fight by praying for the people of Israel. And thanks to our prayers, and because people respect the religious rules and dress accordingly, we will prevail, God willing. Because when women show their legs, soldiers are hit in the legs. And when women reveal their shoulders, automatically soldiers are wounded in the shoulders and hands. As like a Jewish Orthodox woman, that's not my place right now. I'm learning in a school. And later on, would you? Depends what I'm doing at that point. If I'm raising a family, I want to leave my children. Until now, the number of Haradim serving in the Israeli army has been low. Only around 10% of eligible men were drafted in. But this war could see a shift on this question so divisive in Israeli politics. A recent poll showed around half of ultra-Orthodox Jews here now believe they will need to contribute to Israel's defence.